What's the difference between reality and documentary? Um, Were there films that you were like, that you had to fight for to get into the festival? Ooh, hmm, a little bit. I don't, I don't know if I want to say that per se. I think the way you were the campaigner. Yeah, you have like your fiefdom in the shorts, yeah. and like there's, I guess, six of us mm -hmm. in features. So it's very much like everyone has their space to give what they want. Mm -hmm in terms of the entirety of the program, if it's mm -hmm. 100 films, it's like, all right, there's like 20 that you pick, but then it's like, I feel this way about this one, but we love your opinion on this one. Let's talk about it, let's figure it out. How does it fit? Do we have this already that's similar and would cannibalize that, or this one had its premiere already, or all the reasons why you would choose anything. So I think it happens a lot. Um, but then usually that happens at the end, where it's like, all right, there's six slots left. You're like, oh, what about this one? I really the love last that. minute yeah. late submission film yeah. that comes in like, and is a five. Out the of five. one that you really liked. It's like, oh, I really like this one. We don't have something like that. So like, yeah, I think that that definitely happened. I will say, it's funny. Uh, our opening night film mm -hmm. contestant. Mm -hmm. Which I programmed them. Oh. oh my god. No, okay. but like. I went to Camden, uh -huh. I saw the film. I, I had already seen it because they submitted it, but I saw it in the yeah. audience and I really loved it. And I talked to the director and I'm like, this is a great film. And then when I came back to our team, I'm like, listen, I love this crazy ass film. Mm -hmm. This shit is wild. Mm -hmm. It's so entertaining. The story yeah. is the archive, the like breadth of what we're telling. We're talking about the beginnings of reality TV and like Japanese culture and psychological malfeasance. I don't even know what to call it. Yeah. And like all these different things through a really interesting character. And I was like, yeah, I love this film. This is great. Okay, let's program it. And then it becomes like, oh, this is, this is so fun. We should open with this. And then like that's another like fun thing to be like, all right, cool. My taste is validated. I'm not crazy. This mm -hmm. is fun and interesting. And that's really cool within the whole breadth of all the films that you're watching to say that, like, all right, we really think this is going to be a fun watch with the audience. Yeah. Like, let's get that going. So, yeah. Do I like documentaries? I love documentaries. I would say Paris is burning. I watch a lot of, like, Nat Geo. I watch um, anything with animals, planet Earth. True crime documentaries. Like the um, conversations with the killer. I've seen those. Those are good. World War II uh, historical films, um, especially sea battles. Ooh. What? Uh, Let the Fire Burn is also a great documentary, which is about the MOVE bombing in Philadelphia in 1968. Favorite documentary, I would say, is a movie called The Work. Uh, I'm not sure when it came out, but it's, it's about an experimental therapy program for uh, inmates in a maximum security prison in California. Uh, and it's, it's just emotionally one of the most gripping things I've ever seen. Favorite documentary would be The Act of Killing. Um, I actually moved to Denmark uh, for six years because I wanted to work with that director. I think it's the perfect film. It, it's got it all. It's like journalistically ambitious, incredibly artistic, uh, enacted social change in the country, in Indonesia. I don't really watch documentaries. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just like TV better. Like, like, I mean, I guess I haven't given it a shot. Speaking of special press, what did your uh, family think of David Holmes, The Boy Who Lives? Oh, yeah. No cameras, have a scene. Being a stuntman is the best job in the world. What was nice about it was that they all grew up together, 10 years on every film, but it was brilliant until it wasn't.
I told you my, my, my dad was I there. was sitting beside them, I you think. Said, you said I told you. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing, like, I had caretakers that night, a shorts program, and the intro would have been during the Q&A of The Boy Who Lived. Mm -hmm. And so I told our program manager, Anita, I was like, you know what? I'm going to need you to get somebody to do this intro because yeah. I just found out that David Radcliffe is coming to the screening. I gotta be there. Like, I'm holding the golden ticket right now. I'm not leaving this, right? Yeah. And so she got somebody else to cover it. And I was sitting with the rest of the team, Sarah, Megan, and yeah. Rafaela. And we were just like in the back of IFC, just like, yeah. Like, so excited. I think by the time that the, the movie ended, I was just so moved by David's story because it's the first time yeah. I've heard about it. And then I think I was sitting beside your uh, family, and so they were like, just also, we were all just like laughing together, crying together. It was a good special press to bring people together. We were talking about how that should be our like feel good staff like movie screening that we should do. We should start doing that, like for Doc and Wacy, like a, a movie that is just like feel good, feel good that we should, because you know, documentary can be so the hardest depressing. part of programming. Yeah, <laughs> like every day crying. What's, what's going to be the fun thing? Mm -hmm. we... Me in my office every day, wiping tears. It's 10:30 a.m. on a Tuesday. I'm bawling, but all in the name of documentary. Same Ask me if I've watched Fight Club. I haven't. Have I watched this one obscure documentary that was not programmed in any festival? Yes. Why Did I you cry? Watch Fight Club? Yes. Why haven't I watched Fight Club? Yeah, you gotta understand how angsty so, so society is. Here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. All the men with the sad men doing uh, all these terrible things is they don't have Alpha males, what can we say? No, we need we need uh, rec league UFC to like get a lot of the male angst. Get male angst. So here's the thing, I watched I think up until the lie scene mm. of Fight Club. And it was just too much for me. I was like, this is a little bit it was getting too late on whatever weekday night that I was watching it, and I was like this is beyond what I can handle right now. I paused it, went to bed, but <laughs> I haven't revisited since. But everyone tells me that I should it helps make you it past It helps that you understand uh, why people store the capital and the shit they do. I mean, but do I want to understand that comprehension? Yeah, it's for, I'm okay. for, con for context. You know what, I, I like to be empty-minded. I know too much as a documentary programmer as already. Let me just be numb in some parts of my life. I want to say, though, about the thing about a feel-good, uplifting story, right? Yes. I had, my family was there, okay. my girlfriend, my dad, and my cousin. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen my cousin in years, mm -hmm. legitimately. And my dad was with them, and they were like, oh, what are we gonna do? Like, we're here the next couple of days. And I'm like, I'm doing Doc NYC, I literally have no time. Yeah, I'm busy. But, mm -hmm. would you want to come to this? And I, I was like, okay, what would be something that they would just tangentially, they know nothing about any yeah, of this yeah. stuff. See, I was like, oh, we should do David home. So, Got them the tickets, and they were like, oh, that was really good. I had a great time. Such a powerful story. It kind of felt like, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing over in our documentary world is like, you know, it gets in the minds of the everyday yeah. <laughs> person. They can appreciate it. I mean, we're kind of in the golden age of documentary, but also I feel like we're unintentionally, because of all the network and conglomerates money, barreling down the celebrity documentary theme right now where it's just like each celebrity who has a big name and its own following with their own respects are like getting all these movies. You right? wouldn't want your own celebrity doc like following you? If you I'm, I am attending the Beyonce screening of Renaissance <laughs> in a few weeks. Yes, I, I, I will be there. But all in the name for films like Caterpillar. All in the name for films like Caterpillar. Uh, Crazy movie. Crazy yeah, movie. Yeah, I feel bad. Mm -hmm. I feel bad. That's, that's sad. That's not a sad one. You think that was a sad one? I think that was I think that was a really Char interesting character study. I think it was an amazing character study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was happy they all picked it. I mean, it's a it's a film about a guy who wants to get eye, permanent eye contacts, one of the few people in the world, and travels all the way to India to get them for free, and it goes horribly wrong. But I think the cinematography of that was just yeah. impeccable. Like it was much bigger than what was written on the page. Yeah. And I think that's one of those movies where we were telling a lot of people to watch it because it's not a top liner, it's not a special press, but it's a film that you need to see. And I don't think you're ever gonna forget pun? about it. Was that a pun? <laughs> oh my god! Ah, I guess it would be a pun. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If I could make a documentary, well I am making one. Uh, it's about a cellist who discovers that his great-great-uncle was a famous composer 100 years ago. 
but for whatever reason his name was lost to history so then the cellist begins a lifelong project of bringing that name and that music back to life and i've been following him around the world as he like plays that music un ejemplo nosotros como latinos que venimos de de indocumentados a veces al cruzar este se nos hace como como de película porque pasas por tantas cosas en la frontera que que te quedas así y dices wow the black liberation army Yes, that'd be it. That'd be the one. Because I feel like they're a quintessential organization within our understanding of what it actually takes to be free as black people. I don't know. Well, I go to um, University of Wisconsin-Madison, so I'd probably do it about the volleyball team there because they're really good. And I used to play volleyball. It would be about uh, Sam Bankman Freed, the CEO of FTX, and like how he basically manipulated like all the people in who invested in his company. I think it would make a documentary about the uh, two older gentlemen who frequent the coffee shop that I go to. They're there every morning. They talk about everything under the sun, uh, including some like very surprising things that you would never expect from two 70-year-old men. It would be about traveling, something, I'm not really sure. Off the top of my head, um, Ansel Adams, um, Peter Lick. It would be about a uh, graduate from Florida State University who, uh, who left school with two degrees and said she was going to sell her car and move to New York City to be a bartender. <laughs> that's her. Right behind. Right behind. Yeah, that's her. Yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. Well, I gave myself one year moving to New York and just to figure out my life, and I always said I was going to go back and get my master's. Ten years later, I did get my master's, but I still bartend. Have you ever wanted to make a documentary? Oh, God, I'm going to start. I've made a few. Ooh. They're, they're not at the level of the ones that our filmmakers program. have done, mm -hmm. but they're on their way. Okay. Any in development? Any in? A few. Ooh. We're working on it. We're in progress. Yeah, I got so a little bit of short. Got did a couple shorts, a couple sports shorts, which got me into sports. Okay, loads. we love sports. Yeah, we do. They're fine. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, I'm working on a thing on this history of Newark, New Jersey. Oh, cool. Yeah. And you're like local, right? You're yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a whole. A local boy. Yeah, Here we go. A smidge. It's a whole saga mm -hmm. about the riots. Mm -hmm. My great grandfather died in the riots. Oh, it's a whole not thing. the tea. Yeah. Oh, we, we're gonna learn a lot about your family. Yeah. You know, Here we go. Let's go, Harrison. No, it's, it's the whole thing. It was crazy. I didn't know that until. What like one Thanksgiving? Like, like three, like three years ago. Yeah. And it's like, oh, what, what, why? So families really drop things in so casually. It's like, oh, this one traumatic event happened, and it changed yeah. the course of our family's history. But we're just going to talk about it very casually at a dinner one time. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> and you're making a movie about it. A smidge, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever stop programming at festivals? Why did you get so existential on me? I, I mean, <laughs> one life to live, but also. Um. Like, do you ever get tired? You know. Yeah, I'm always tired. Mm -hmm. Chronically tired. I'm chronically. It's giving anemia. Yeah, yeah. I gotta get checked out. My mm -hmm. iron levels. <laughs> um, there's always new stories, and sometimes it feels like there won't always be new stories. It's just like, didn't we do this already? Didn't we talk about this? Where are we at this? Is this is repetitive or derivative? And you get kind of like, oh my god. But it is very like all artists, I think, are narcissistic. Of course. The film is just so like. Look at my thing! Yeah. Look at it! I did it! I did something to that which I always laugh at. Especially when I think about how much cool shit there is. Like this light I accidentally turned off and on. It's mm -hmm. so, like somebody industrially designed this light. Yeah. You tap it, it comes on, tap mm -hmm. it goes off, and all these things, and made a bazillion dollars and sold so many of them. And no one knows who this person is. <laughs> they did or anybody cares yeah so like there's that kind of thing that sometimes is in the back of my head where it's like you spend this time and energy and the thought on these things that are so ephemeral right it's just like oh film cool we loved it boom maybe it'll change something maybe it won't maybe you laugh and you cry maybe that's the joy of it the buddhist the yeah. fucking what's the thing called the sand paintings it just it's about that oh the the, the, the <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah it's just about that and mm -hmm. then it goes away and yeah and then she have to move it and it and shakes that's, and that's fine and you, so, maybe, but I don't know.
what's the difference between reality and documentary? Um, reality is the documentary and the melodrama. They're love childs. It's reality television. So they're not, they're not different? They're not different, baby. Oh. I would say that documentary is the parent of reality TV. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about Real World. Real World was yes. a documentary. Yes. It was a documentary show yes. that was the catalyst of a whole brand of like situational reality, mm -hmm. right? Obviously now we have many different streams. There's the lifestyle right. show, there's right. the competition the show. the verite reality. That comes from documentary yeah. principles. Yeah. I think now what we know as modern day reality TV adds melodramatic elements in it. You know, like the symbols, the, the spicy music. The, mu the music is hilarious because it's usually like a track that's like, there's, this show has four music tracks. There's, something's afoot. It's like, do, do, boo, do, boo, do, boo, do, boo. <laughs> then there's like, uh oh, they're about to fight. Da -da -da. And it's exactly. like, but it's only the same. They just, they just like cycle back and forth and mm -hmm, back and forth. It's mm -hmm. so hilarious. That's what I'm saying. Th those are. It's a funny trope. That music trope is from melodrama. The production and sound design that makes something seem heightened that is yeah. like more than it actually is. And then you use documentary, which is just documenting people in real life. You have a child, it's reality TV, baby. Do you have a take on the hybrid, like the reverse end of that? Like the, the Nathan Fielder. Like the mockumentary? Like the Nathan Fielder, like Jury Duty. Like. Oh, I actually love Jury Duty. I love Jury Duty. I actually, I think that it's also recognizing reality TV as its own genre with a series of tropes like the music, right? And it turns it into this thing that is like larger than life and we can poke fun of. I think, you know, my biggest, this is a documentary pet peeve. Uh -huh. um, that's a pet peeve, but more of like, I wonder where we're gonna go with this is like, yeah. the interview, right? Yeah. How many different ways are we gonna do an interview? Like with the bokeh it's, in the background? It's, are you talking about that? No, it's just, just like the huge wide. Like yeah. if you're here, then we see the whole bar for some reason. We yeah. just see everything. Yeah. And then there's like the new like, all right, let's do a canted. Like we're under your head and like, we only get like your faces in the corner or like, I, I just think that like, it's an interesting space where DPs and directors, we have to make it feel a certain way. So everyone's trying to like recreate the most basic thing about your story. Yeah. And it's like, all right, calm down. Just, there's nothing wrong with like 245 degree angles on <laughs> 180 degree plane. Yeah. Or, you know, just a straight on. It's, I feel like that's the next mockumentary that I could like, see. <laughs> just like, <laughs> like crying. making fun of the interview. Yeah. Right? Just like different crazy shots. I think about like people um, don't sit in chairs anymore. They're always lean, they're, he's leaning on a bar. Yeah, they, like for love is blind is that all the time. It's like somebody with their feet up on a bed, just like caw, 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 and then that's like the shot. And I'm like okay, that's but and I'm sure the cinematographer thought that they were in their bag. Oh, totally. They were like ooh unique shot. Totally amazing. I don't know if the last hand really started, but I just always think about that. Look at the iPad. How hot that is! Like. Mm -hmm. Now the person has to look at it. Mm -hmm. Remember this when you were sad and you yeah. have to show them. <laughs> oh my god, the reenactments. Reenactments are so cringe. Well, I literally, like, I'm like, the reenactments is more this like, here's an iPad of someone else's interview. Can you look at it on camera? And then you go, oh. I knew they would lie to me. Like this is just <laughs> like, uh, it's just so funny how everyone falls into these things. But that's okay. It's all right. I'm being, I'm being a bit critical. I'm entertained. <laughs> If you're entertained, that's the whole point of the movies, right? Are you not entertained? What was his name? Gladius Maximus? <laughs> Russell Crowe, what was his name? And, I don't know. And Gladiator. Is that, is that from Gladiator? Yes, like, goes, are you not entertained? I haven't seen that movie either. I'm a butterfly Taking my time I'm a skeleton